Unlike disposable pens, fountain pens are built for years of use, if not a lifetime. However, in order to keep them running properly, you do need to put in a tiny bit of effort in cleaning them. In this video, we'll guide you through the simple steps of how to clean a fountain pen. So why clean a fountain pen? Why brush your teeth? Why water the garden? If you want to keep your pen writing smoothly for the long term, you need to clean it. And it isn't as difficult or time consuming as it sounds. It doesn't require any special tools either. All you need is running tap water and a towel. When do you need to clean a fountain pen? Even if you use the same ink color, you should clean it at least twice a year to ensure optimal performance. If you love switching ink colors, you will need to clean it before inking up with a new color. If you're not planning on writing for a while, you need to clean it before it goes into storage. I love switching inks often, and I use a variety of different filling mechanisms, so I'm always cleaning my pens. Here, I'll show you how to clean several different types of fountain pens quickly and easily. Okay, so we're going to remove a cartridge and clean out a cartridge filling pen. This Lamy Safari happens to be one of the most popular cartridge filling pens that we sell for the simple reason that it's very easy to install a cartridge and be able to just plug in a cartridge and start writing right away. So uh, first thing you would do, of course, is like I showed you here, is unscrew the barrel, take out the cartridge. You could either put a, dispose of the cartridge entirely or you could actually refill them using a blunt tip needle syringe and be able to fill it up with, let's say, a different color if you prefer. Uh, but usually that's what the converters are for, but you know, you could do that with a cartridge as well. So then with this front section, what you'd want to do is you'd want to run it under cool running tap water until the ink runs clear. So like until all the ink is, is pretty much gone, you'd see no color left in the water and uh, it would start running completely clear. And then once you're done with that, you would put it off to the side. I usually would have a paper towel set handy or uh, sometimes what I like to do is I like to line a cup with the paper towel and let gravity also do some work here and put the nib and section in the cup with the nib pointed down so that you got the capillary action and you also have gravity working for your advantage uh, so that way it dries the pen a bit quicker. You could also then dab the nib as well to help dry it um, but you know, I usually tend to just leave everything just drying so that way it's less time I could just kind of go move on and ink some of my other pens at the same time. If the pen was sitting inked for some time in a drawer, hey, we're not all perfect, right? Then you may find that a rinse won't be enough to get rid of all that stubborn ink residue. A soak in some pen flush like this Monteverde brand pen flush will help clean up stubborn ink clogs. For that extra thorough clean, you could throw the nib unit into an ultrasonic jewelry cleaner for a few minutes. So let's say that this grip section and nib was sitting in your drawer for a very long time. You know, it happens, but what you would want to do is you'd want to hit it with a, something a little bit stronger than just regular tap water in order to uh, help get rid of those ink clogs. So what that you would then do is use something like this Monteverde pen flush It's specially formulated to help dissolve ink or to help get it off of certain materials. And you would pour it into a cup like this. And then what I would do is I would set the nib inside of the cup and just shake it around a little bit and just let it sit there and soak for a while because it needs some time to leach out all of the excess ink that's in the feed and the nib and it will help with being able to uh, get all of that stuff out of there. So then once you would let this sit for about five, 10 minutes, then you would come back, take the nib out, rinse it out like we did before, and then let it air dry, and then you should be up and running after that. Sometimes too is like ink will get inside of the cap of the pen, and that happens quite often, especially with high capacity pens like an eyedropper fill or a, uh, a vacuum filler that sometimes the ink will leak a little bit into the cap, especially if there's some changes in air pressure and everything, ink might burp into the cap. So what I would do is also rinse the cap under 
cool running tap water, see all the ink kind of come out of it and run, let it run clear. And then what I would do is I would take a paper towel like this and I would start to twist it and make a pointed end. And then what I would do is put that pointed end inside of the cap and start twisting it so that it would get all the way to the end. So I'm kind of like screwing it almost into the cap that way. And you wouldn't see anything here because this does not have any ink inside of it here. But um, you would see some ink coming off onto the, the paper towel there because you'd be getting all of the ink and excess water from inside of the cap. So that would be something that you might want to do with the barrel too, just in case you did get some ink inside the barrel, which would be the case for, let's say, the uh, Pelican piston, which I'll show you. We could clean out the inside of the barrel of that. So while we have the Lamy Safari front section soaking there in the pen flush, we have a converter filling fountain pen here that has some ink left over inside of the uh, reservoir that's in here. And with a converter fill fountain pen, what you'd want to do is you'd want to practice exactly how you would be filling the pen, but you would just want to be filling and expelling water out of the pen. So uh, in here I have just plain old tap water. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw the piston knob down and then fill it back up. And you'll see it looks like almost like we did fill it with ink, but that's just ink mixed with water. And then we're going to expel it out. And then we're going to fill it up again. And then expel it out. And then we're going to fill it up yet again. So this may take several passes until you start to see the ink color lighten up in the converter. And what you're aiming for is to get it so that it's completely clear. So it looks like you're drawing up water. And that might not be possible doing it in this particular example because where I'm drawing it up from is already tinted colored water. Um, but if you're doing this in a sink basin where you have running water, then you should get clear water fairly quickly. So uh, just keep doing this process here until it becomes clean. If you want to as well, you could actually separate both of them. So you could then do the same process as with the cartridge uh, pen and just rinse this under running tap water or soak it in pen flush. And then what you could also do is just draw up water directly into the converter and sometimes I might also shake it too, especially if there's an agitator, which there isn't in this converter, but sometimes there is a little uh, ball or like what looks like a little coiled screw inside of the converter, and that's an agitator. So that actually helps a little bit in being able to clean the ink off of the walls of the converter, is that you would give it like a little bit of a shake and then drain it so that it would help clean the converter a bit quicker. So then when you're done with both of those and everything's clean to satisfaction, you would then leave them to the side here, or like I showed you, put the, the paper inside of a cup there to just let it air dry or just blot it dry slightly uh, for a little while and that should get you uh, back to uh, normal there. To help remove ink residue stuck to the walls of the converter, you may want to fill the pen using pen flush, let it sit for five to 10 minutes and then expel the pen flush and rinse with tap water. Next we have the Pelican M205. This is a piston fill demonstrator pen. And as you can see, we have ink inside of it. So we're going to try to clean this out. And same thing, same principle goes with the cartridge converter pen. Where we're going to do is just simply uh, expel the ink out and we're going to draw up water in push it out here. So I'm using the blind cap as opposed to the piston knob. I'm using the blind cap of this Pelican to raise and lower the piston head that's inside of the barrel. So same principle applies. What you're doing is you're just flushing it out with water. And the more that you flush it out, the lighter the color inside of the barrel will be. And this too, if you want to maybe like give it a little bit of shake, it might help with dislodging some of the, the stuck ink that's maybe on the walls or in the feed. So we're getting it to be nice light color now. I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. 
doesn't have to be super, super clear, but just clear enough. And like I mentioned before, this water is already tinted blue, so it's going to be kind of hard to determine that it's going to be completely clear. But a neat little trick about pelicans, and this applies with some other demonstrator type pens, is that in the grip section here, we have the feed and ink is pretty evident to see through a clear section here. So if ink gets trapped in here, it's going to be quite noticeable in the long term, especially if you mix it with other different colors. So what Pelican has though, as an advantage to other piston fill pens is that the whole entire nib section unscrews and we could apply the same principle as we did to clean the cap to clean this Pelican. So in order to get rid of this blue tint that we have here and this clear, clear pen that, that uh, just looks so crystal clear otherwise, is that we would just make that same point that we did before and then just blot the inside of the pen dry. And clearly I could do a much, much better job of this, but I'm just going to kind of do a, a quick little job here just to show you the, the difference between what it was before and what it is now. Uh, but we could also go into it with filling the whole entire pen with pen flush and letting it sit for a while. And then that would get rid of virtually anything that's inside of there, whether it be a little ink spot or a little bit of staining that should be able to uh, clear it right up. And of course, then after you're done with all of your cleaning, you would then leave it uh, to air dry. You can even separate the, the different components here and that would let it air dry a bit quicker. Inks with a lot of sheen or shimmer can pose problems for fountain pens, especially if the ink sits in the pen for a prolonged period of time. For the most thorough cleaning, you may wanna take apart the nib and feed to clean separately and soak them in pen flush. Most nibs can be disassembled in such a way. So sometimes you might be using a shimmer or a highly saturated ink and you may need to completely clean down the nib and feed unit. And most nibs, as we saw with the Pelican, kind of come out as a full unit with the housing that screws into the section. However, what you would need to do to fully clean the nib and feed is to be able to remove it. So most nibs and feeds are friction fit into the section. So then what you would do is you would take it with the thumb on the feed and your forefinger on the top of the nib. I'm using a, a, a paper towel here so that I'm not getting ink all over myself. But then what you would want to do is you want to pull it straight out of the section and then you would separate it. So the nib just sits right on top of the feed and you can see this feed has got a lot of sheeny ink on it, which then we could do is we could throw it into the pen flush along with the nib because we see the nib here has got quite a bit of ink, uh, lots of dye that's on here and we're just gonna leave it in there. We can see that's starting to get the ink off of the nib and feed and then we'll keep this off to the side. All right, so next we have this Twisby Vac Mini, which is a vacuum filling system. And vac fillers, they're the bane of my existence because they're a little bit harder to clean, I would say, than most other fountain pen filling systems, save for the uh, vacuumatic uh, pump filling type system. Uh, but the reason being that it's one of the most convenient one stroke filling mechanisms, mechanisms, but it's also the hardest to kind of clean out all of the ink that's inside of the barrel. And then even when you clean it, it's not really like fully, truly, pristinely clean and dry in, in like brand new condition either. So uh, going in with that kind of expectation, uh, let's, let's take a look at how we could uh, be able to best clean this barrel. So what you would do is same principle applies with the piston fill and the converter is that what you would want to do is you would want to fill the pen up and how we fill a vacuum filler is we unscrewed the blind cap, we raised up the piston rod and then we're going to dip the nib into water and then we're going to press down and what we're going to do is we're going to do that again because it hasn't built up enough pressure to get the, there we go, and now we filled the vacuum filler with some 
water here and then what we're going to do is we're going to expel it out over here and then we're going to do the same operation here and fill it and you may want to tilt it back and forth get all of that ink out see it's already starting to get lighter So let's say we got this whole thing cleaned out, which we did for the most part. Even looking at it now, it looks like a mess inside because this is a demonstrator. It's very clear, very transparent. So you can see a whole bunch of water droplets that's in here. And with pens like the Custom 823, there's really no way to get in there and completely dry that thing out. However, being that this is a Twisby pen and they are meant to be taken apart, there's two ways that we can get at this pen. One is the back part here, which the Twisby wrench is included to take apart the vacuum filler. And the other way is at the front top of the section as well. So at this part, we could unscrew the grip and then we could do that same little trick that I showed you before with the paper towel is just get it into a nice point and then you could go inside you could pull back the the rod that's here and then just twist it and get it on the inside so that it absorbs all of the moisture on the inside of the barrel however as you notice when I put the rod back into place all of that moisture then gets replaced by everything that was behind the piston head there so um, that's the reason why then you would go into it with the Twisby wrench and then open up the back part is if you want to clean all on the inside here. Uh, but that would also require having to replace one of the O-rings here. And usually I would not recommend fully disassembling your pens unless it was, let's say, one of those once a year or once every few year uh, cleaning uh, you know fits that you might have that let's say you really put something in it that's that's super gunky right now and you left it for uh, a whole lot of time and you need to clean it completely out before putting it into storage or switching out to a different ink um, then I would recommend let's say fully taking this thing apart but if you could live with a little bit of moisture that's on the inside there which of course will end up drying out eventually or will just end up mixing with the next uh, ink and then not fully desaturating or changing the color of it unless it was like a very light yellow ink um, it's not going to really affect the next ink that goes into this pen and then of course when you're done with everything then you would just let it uh, dry out or like I showed you there you would blot it with the towel okay so last we have the eyedropper fill fountain pen. This Opus 88 holds a tremendous amount of ink and despite its high capacity actually does not have too difficult of a filling mechanism to clean. It's very very simple actually. So what you would do is with any eyedropper pen they usually separate right here at the grip section. We're going to unscrew the grip section to access the barrel and this you would clean out like you would any cartridge converter type pen. You could run it under cool running tap water or throw it in uh, some pen flush to, if you have a really stubborn clog there. Uh, but for this one, we're just going to set it aside just for demonstrational purposes. And we're going to focus on the barrel because this is where uh, it would be a little bit more trickier to get the ink and a little bit different than the other methods we've previously used. So the Opus 80 has a shutoff valve which needs to get pushed down in order to really access the rest of the uh, barrel here. So we're going to unscrew the blind cap, we're going to pull that rod back, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take, normally what we could do is if I was in front of a faucet, is I would just fill this barrel up with water and then just dump it out. But here what we're going to do is we're going to use the eyedropper, drop water in here, and then dump it out over here. And then just repeating here. You could do it with some force using let's say a nasal aspirator or if you have a blunt needle syringe you could also do it a little bit more forcefully that way. And you can see it's getting lighter and lighter as we go along.
and then if you wanted to as well, if it was some really stubborn stains and whatnot in there that you could then use pen flush, let it sit in there for a little while, shake it up, and then dump it on out. That should get it pretty nice and clean, looking almost new. And then of course, when you're finished with cleaning it out, what I would recommend doing again is taking a paper towel. You could either let it sit, of course, or you could, let's say if you really wanted to force it and put it uh, get that get it dry nice and dry is that you would use the paper towel and just keep screwing that paper towel in there forcing it in even move the uh, the rod around here so maybe you could access the rest of that ink that is trapped behind it and then you would have it mostly devoid of any moisture inside, but then you could also, of course, leave it out to dry, which is what I would suggest doing uh, with any of these pens as soon as you're finished cleaning them. One last note about eyedropper fill pens is that when you're done cleaning them and you want to re-ink them, what you may want to do is put a little bit of 100% silicone grease around these section threads so that it would help prevent any undue leakage. This Opus 88 already has an O-ring on it and some pretty good threads on it already, but if you're converting another fountain pen into an eyedropper, let's say a Caveco Sport, you may want to put some light silicone grease around those threads uh, and then fill the barrel full of ink and then put them together again when you refill the pen. If you're having trouble getting a particular pen clean, please let us know in the comments below and I'll provide a helpful reply or publish a new pen cleaning video to address the issue. Keep your pens clean and stay inky my friends, take care.